In today's video, we're gonna go over the best cards for those making different types of salaries. We're gonna start with the lowest income bracket, which is $50,000 and below, and work our way up. The reason I use credit cards for most purchases is that the credit cards that I use, they generally give me between one to 5% cash back just for my everyday spending. So as long as you're using your credit cards right, which is you're paying them off in full every single cycle, it's basically free money. This video will also assume that you have a good credit score already. If you don't have a good credit score or you don't have a credit score at all, I would probably recommend something Something like a secured credit card to get your credit off the ground and then you can come revisit this video later on all right so when you're making less than fifty thousand dollars per year in general your spend is going to be a lot lower than some other people so with that in mind what we really want to target are zero dollar annual fee cards these are cards that are free to own but are going to give us some perks for using them the most straightforward type of reward in our case is going to be getting a flat cash back for the spend that we already do with travel cards you need to be slightly more careful because they often charge an annual fee and for the amount of spend that we're doing at this income level, it might not justify it. The first credit card in today's video is the Chase Freedom Unlimited card. So if you make less than 50K per year, this is a really good card because there is zero annual fee and you'll get a $200 bonus as long as you spend $500 in the first three months of owning this card. You also get 5% cash back at gas station and grocery store purchases, 3% back at restaurants, as well as 1.5% back on everything else. And that's one of the reasons I really like this card. It's so straightforward at, at the very minimum, you're gonna get 1.5% back on everything that you spend on it. And then if you add in the groceries and gas, giving you 5% back, then your blended cash back is probably gonna be in the 2% range. So that means if you were to spend $1,000 a month on just your everyday type of spending, that's an extra $20 in your pocket every single month. And if you did this for the entire year, that's an extra $240 in your pocket. Plus the fact for every new card member that applies for this card, you get that $200 bonus as long as you spend $500 in the first three months. I think it is a really good deal. Now, you must know with any of these credit cards today that the only reason that they're going to work is that if you're able to actually spend money on the cards and then pay it off on time. If you have any doubts about whether or not you can do that, then you should probably think twice before applying for any of these cards today. By the way, there will be links for all the cards mentioned today down below in the description, and you will also be supporting the channel by using them. Another great card at this salary level is going to be the City Double Cash card. If you've been following me for quite a while, you know that this is one of my favorite credit cards for almost anybody because of its simplicity. It has no annual fee, and like its name suggests, you actually get 2% cash back on everything. It's 1% whenever you spend it, and then 1% whenever you pay it off. That's literally it, no frills or gimmicks, and you also get a $200 bonus whenever you spend $1,500 in the first six months with the City Double Cash. Now, one of the great things about the City Double Cash is that when you are redeeming the cash back, you can also get a check sent to you or a direct deposit. So it's not just a statement credit, which I think is a lot more flexible than some of the other cash back cards today. Now, there are some honorable mentions that I wanna mention in this salary range because they're going to be free cards that you can sign up for, and they're usually with your bank, like the Wells Fargo Active Cash and the Bank of America Customized Cash Card. Any of these are gonna be good because they're gonna give you flat cash back bonuses for the spending that you already do. And they're often pretty easy to apply for because if you already have a banking relationship with these places, you can just go in and ask to see if you can apply for them. Both of these cards have a similar cash reward bonus to the Chase Freedom Unlimited and the City Double Cash, which is $200 back whenever you spend a certain amount of money. Lastly, at this level, a lot of people ask me about the Apple card surprisingly, and they want my opinion on it. and. So so here it is. I don't love it or hate it. You do get 2% cash back whenever you use Apple Pay. But the thing is, when you use Apple Pay, that's usually on your phone or your watch. And so even, even if you wanna use that really nice shiny metal card, you don't get to, especially if you want the maximum rewards. The other thing I don't like about the Apple Card is that there is no sign up bonus. And so if you're trying to get those sign up bonuses, which is the only reason why you would wanna maybe open one of these cards, then the Apple Card is just not gonna offer that. Now, one of the saving graces of the Apple Card is that their app interface is visually beautiful beautiful and it also helps any credit card beginner basically understand how credit works. It shows you how much interest you owe as well as when you should pay it off, et cetera. And I think that no other app out there visually displays the information quite like Apple does. All right, now if you make between 50,000 and $150,000 per year, I think this is where the credit card world really starts to open up for you. One of the best cards in my opinion that you can get at this salary level is going to be the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. It comes with an annual fee of $95, which definitely sucks whenever you have a credit card and you have to pay a $95 annual fee. However, 
However, the idea here is that you're gonna spend money on this card and it's gonna make up for that fee and then some. One of the ways to do this is to take advantage of any welcome offer that these credit cards are offering you. So the Chase Sapphire Preferred in particular offers you 60,000 bonus points as long as you spend $4,000 on the card within the first three months of owning it. That's roughly $600 back in value as long as you're able to unlock that bonus. And right then and there, the card pays for itself in the first year. That sign up bonus is worth even more if you use it with Chase Travel. So it can be worth up to $750 if you use the Chase Travel Portal. This is the first card in the video today that starts to use points rather than just flat cash back. So it adds a level of gamification to this whole thing. With this card, you also get 3X points on any dollar that you spend for dining, including takeout and 2X points for any travel. The easiest way to think about the value of one point is that usually 100 points equals $1. So let's talk about some strategy to really maximize the value out of any of these cards that have a big signup bonus today. What you really wanna do is to make sure you time a big purchase with the signup of this card. That way you don't really have to stress about hitting that signup bonus at all. So with this card in particular, since you need to spend $4,000 in the first three months, that's not super easy if your natural spend is not already there. But it becomes a lot easier if you need to time a big purchase. Let's say you need to buy a MacBook. Let's say you're going on a bachelor or bachelorette trip and you know you're gonna spend $3,000 on that trip. You can put it all on your card and have your friends reimburse you. Since a lot of the value comes from the signup bonus for a lot of the cards today, we really want to be confident that we can hit these spend levels without stress. In the years afterward, you just really need to make sure you're making up for the $95 annual fee of the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which can easily be done if you get 9,500 points in a single year. You can also take advantage of their suite of many perks, such as lift points, dash pass for DoorDash, try saying that four times fast, or an Instacart subscription. There's also a $50 hotel credit that you can qualify for as long as you book a hotel through their Ultimate Rewards portal, which is pretty nice. And there are no foreign transaction fees on this card. So if you can find some value that way, it'll also be good. Overall, this is going to be a really good card for someone who makes between 50 and 150K per year. You could also earn a little bit more and get this card. But if you really like travel or dining, this is the card for you. All right, the next card at this salary level, which is where a lot of people get a ton of value out of, and it's one of my personal favorite cards is the American Express Gold card. I think of this as my main dining card. Anytime I go to a restaurant or buy groceries, I'm usually using this card because it gets you a 4X point multiplier on your spend, which is the equivalent of 4% cash back or dining out, which is absolutely ridiculous. In terms of making up the $250 annual fee, which is quite hefty, yes, you also have two different ways to make it up really quickly. The first is that it offers a $120 dining credit, $10 every single month, as long as you're spending money at Grubhub, Shake Shack, Cheesecake Factory, or some other select restaurants. You also get $120 in Uber cash, so basically $10 a month as well to spend on Uber or Uber Eats. So just right there with $120 in Uber and the $120 in Grubhub or Shake Shack or Cheesecake Factory, you can already see that you're already quickly offsetting the $250 annual fee. You also get 3X points on flights booked with airlines or Amex Travel com and 1x points on everything else. So in my opinion, the card is almost paying you to own it as long as you're getting $10 worth of free perks elsewhere from all of the other benefits of the card. Right now, there's a 60,000 bonus point introductory offer as long as you spend $6,000 within the first six months. So just like the Chase Sapphire Preferred, we're gonna wanna time a big purchase with this signup bonus. When it comes to redeeming your membership rewards points to get the most value, you'll likely want to transfer it to an airline partner or use it for their hotel collection. If you fly any of their partner airlines, Airlines, which I'll put up on the screen right now, you'll probably find value in using their points. There are also no foreign transaction fees on this card, which is also really nice if you're traveling, as well as you get a $100 hotel credit whenever you book a hotel through their hotel collection for things such as food on the premises or a spa service or something like that. Whenever you check in, the front desk will tell you what that $100 credit goes to, and I really enjoy it because I usually just get some food or some room service, and therefore it's covered by my Amex Gold. Again, this is another overall amazing card, especially if you're in that 50 to 150K salary range. And it's one of my personal favorites because I feel like they are paying me to have the card. The next card on our list is going to be the Capital One Venture X card. This comes with a hefty annual fee of $395 which I'll explain how we're gonna offset really quickly here, but I do think you should be making close to six figures if you're trying to apply and use this card. This card sits between the premium cards and the mid-tier cards, so I almost call it like the upper middle class of credit cards out there. And the reason is, is that the $395 annual 
$1,000 fee can be offset really quickly with a travel credit. You get a $300 annual travel credit as long as you use Capital One Travel, so that effectively knocks down the annual fee from $395 to $95. Plus, you get 10,000 bonus miles every anniversary of you owning the card, so right there, that's worth $100 in travel credits as well. So right off the bat, if you like to travel, the $395 annual fee is usually made up for by the travel credit from the Capital One Travel Portal, as well as the 10,000 bonus miles. Their sign-up bonus is often pretty generous. Right now, it's 75,000 miles if you spend $4,000 in the first three months, and you also get a $100 global entry and TSA pre-check credit. You also get 2x points on all other spend, which is quite simple and efficient. It's the equivalent of 2% cash back, which makes this card almost pretty OP. This is also known as a lounge card because you can also get access to over 1,300 airport lounges, and if you live in Denver, DC, or Dallas, you get access to the Capital One Lounge, which is really premium and bougie. If you own the Venture X, you also get two free lounge guest passes for your friends, and authorized users also get two free guest passes as well. And that's one of the most powerful parts of this card is that every authorized user that you add to your Capital One Venture X is free up to four card members. Usually the fee is $75 per authorized user per year. And the fact that this is free is really cool because that means you can add say your spouse, your kids, your cousins, and they all get the benefits of having the Venture X card. Every authorized user gets a priority pass, they get access to airport lounges, and as I said before, you can bring friends in as an authorized user. Another amazing benefit of this card is you get the Hertz President Circle status, which is really great because you can skip the rental counter as well as get a complimentary upgrade whenever you rent a car through Hertz. This is usually a pretty hard status to achieve. You generally have to spend $3,000 per year renting cars to get this status, so the fact that that this card just gives that to you is really nice. As long as you do enough travel to make up for the annual fee, I think this card is really worth it for a lot of people out there. They really made some changes to it early last year that have made it really, really good in my opinion. And especially if you live in DC, Dallas, or Denver, and you get access to the Capital One Lounge, I think it's a no-brainer. Let's get into the highest tier that we're gonna talk about today, the $150,000 salary range and up. And for this salary range, I really like two credit cards in particular. First is the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and second is the American Express Platinum Card. For the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the annual fee for this card is $550, which is astronomical. Yes, I definitely acknowledge that. However, if you travel between one and two times per month, and you're actually able to transfer the points to different types of partners, you can get a lot of value out of this card. This is a really big caveat of this card and I will show you how I like to use my own chase points to get maximum value out of this portal. And sometimes you can even save in the thousands of dollars just on hotel stays using it. But face value, you get 60,000 bonus points as long as you spend $4,000 in the first three months. You get three X points on dining and five to 10 X points on travel whenever you use their portal to book something. You'll get $300 in annual travel credits plus all of these partner benefits like the $100 Instacart membership, $5 in DoorDash every single month, Dash Pass, as well as a Lyft Pink membership and 10X points on Lyft rides. If you can find value in these, then I think the annual fee can easily be offset. And the other additional thing that you get with the Chase Sapphire Reserve is a priority pass as well. The Chase Sapphire Reserve priority pass though, will get you up to $56 in credits at airport restaurants. And that's one of the main reasons I really like this card. And it's one of the ones that I didn't really know about until earlier last year. Basically, whenever you're traveling through an airport, if there's a restaurant that accepts a priority pass and you can easily look it up in their app, you get $28 in free credit just for yourself for anything on that menu. And then if you're traveling with somebody else, you get another $28. You can even take the food to go or just buy water bottles at these restaurants so that you're not paying for water bottles at the airport. It's important to note that the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Amex Platinum both get the priority pass. However, the Chase Sapphire Reserve Priority Pass will get you this credit versus the American Express ones will not. Now, this travel partner thing, how I like to use the points, that the thing that I was talking about earlier, is actually transferring the points to the Hyatt portal. If you Google Hyatt Category 5 or Hyatt Category 6 or 7, you can find a full list of participating hotels. Then what I like to do is I like to check how much a room would cost in terms of points and then just compare it to what the normal rate per dollar is. For example, I went to Category 8, which is the highest tier of Hyatt properties there are. And I selected Ventana Big Sur, which is this really fancy hotel in Big Sur, California. You can see here that a normal room would probably cost you around $1,600 to $1,800 per night, which is absolutely insane. 
but with Hyatt points, it would cost you 45,000 points, which is the equivalent of $450. Right there alone, I know it's a very extreme example. If you booked with points rather than paying them with cash, you save over $1,300 per night. And this is just one example of how I use the Hyatt portal to maximize my chase points. In fact, when I went to LA last year, I went to the Taylor Swift concert, which I know is pretty funny, yes, but I got my Hyatt hotel there for the equivalent of 12,000 points a night, which is $120 per night, when the normal going rate was $380 per night, which I think is a fantastic deal for me. Taylor Swift though, while it was fun, I do think it was very expensive and it's not like I could use points to pay for those tickets. Anyway, that's how you maximize the value of the Chase Sapphire Reserve and it's one card that's been in my wallet for a very long time and especially if you travel, I think it's a really good thing to have. All right, now let's talk about the American Express Platinum card, which is basically just a glorified coupon book, which I know it sounds a little bit weird to say that, but I'll explain. So this card basically requires you to pay a hefty $695 annual fee, but here's everything that you get with that annual fee. First, you get a $200 hotel credit, you get a $240 entertainment credit, so $20 back on subscriptions like Disney Plus or Hulu or ESPN or Wall Street Journal. You get $200 back in Uber cash, as well as a $200 airline fee credit. The list goes on, $300 Equinox credit, $100 at Saks every single year, $189 Clear Plus credit, as well as a $155 Walmart Plus credit. Right there alone, if you just use the basic hotel, entertainment, Uber, and airline fee credit, you're already at $840 in value for $695 of an annual fee. So right there, I think it pays for itself. And then especially if you go to Equinox or you use Saks, you can get even more credits back and and that's why I think it's basically like a coupon book. Then there's the airport lounges. With this card, you also get access to the American Express Centurion Lounge, which I've been using a lot, especially if you travel more than one time per month. This place comes in super clutch because there's great Wi-Fi. You usually get free food and free drinks, and it's a great place to hang out before your flight. The Platinum doesn't get you that much in terms of point multipliers. In fact, almost everything is just 1x points, but you do get some multipliers on travel. This is the ultimate card for high income earners. And I think what you should do to see if it's right for you is to go through their entire offer page, see all of the things and the credits that you can get and do some math for yourself and see if it would make sense for you. You have to be comfortable with that $695 annual fee and you wanna make sure that you're actually making up for it every single year. Right now, I believe their signup bonus offer is between 80,000 and 150,000 bonus points. It really depends on who you are and who they're targeting. You just want to make sure you're getting the best possible offer for you when you apply. With any of the cards today, you want to really make sure you're only getting the card if you're seeing the value in their benefits, especially if they have an annual fee. You also want to make sure that you can meet their signup bonuses through strategic or your normal spending. If you can't pay off the balance every single month, then again, I must say, please think twice before you sign up for a credit card. If you need a link to any of the cards that we've talked about today, I will link them down below in the description as well as any additional information and make sure to check out my next video right here and I will see you guys in the next video. All right, peace.